Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to my hotel room in the middle of nowhere. I'm shooting Kofa Mountain for the next 8 days and while I wait for some beautiful light to appear, I thought I'd record some tutorials for you. Today we're going to look at how to remove chromatic aberration in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you 5 different ways to do that so that no matter what image you're working with, no matter how strong the chromatic aberration, you'll definitely have a method for removing it. Now, if you feel like other photographers might benefit from this video, I always appreciate a share on Facebook or Google+. Or feel free to subscribe to my channel, you can see the subscribe button just below. Okay, the first technique that I always use is in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, both do exactly the same thing. I go to the Lens Correction module and I choose Remove Chromatic Aberration. Now if we just zoom into this image, I shot this image at f22 with a 10 stop ND filter and that was to try and get an image that was relatively tourist free which I did achieve in the end but shooting at f22 meant that I ended up with this chromatic aberration around the edges here of the building. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. So to remove this really quickly we just click remove chromatic aberration and as you'll see it removes it extremely well. And We've done the same on this side too. So you saw some cyan or blue chromatic aberration and now it's gone. So that's the first line of defense against chromatic aberration. For method number two, I'm just going to zoom into this image and we'll see we have some really strong chromatic aberration here. And I couldn't remove this in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm going to show you a technique that I actually taught in a previous video, which is very effective in these scenes, especially when around the rock or around the area with chromatic aberration, we have some white or lighter colors. Now, if you're a Raya Pro user, you can just go to Raya Pro, choose Finish, and go to Clean CA. And that'll create a new layer for you. The paintbrush will automatically be selected, and so will the foreground be set to white. And now, we just paint on the mask to remove that chromatic aberration. You see how easy that is? It's really natural. And if you feel it's a little bit strong in some areas, or in all of the areas, we can just reduce the opacity so it looks a little bit more natural. Now, if you don't use Raya Pro at the moment, I'm just going to delete that layer and show you how we do it in Photoshop. So if we press Command and J, or Control and J on a PC, we duplicate the background layer. Then we go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And if we start from zero, we're going to increase the radius until the color on the edges kind of disappears and dissipates. So we can still see some reds and pinks along here. So I'm just going to bring the radius up until those reds don't exist anymore. And I think at about 13, that seems to be OK. So then we press OK. When that's done, we go to the blend mode of this layer and change it to color. Now I'm afraid you can't see color down here, but it's the second bottom blend mode. And now we've reduced the chromatic aberration, but we've also affected the colors across the entire image. So we just have to mask that in. So to create a black mask, we hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and we choose that Add a Mask icon. And now we choose a paintbrush with a white foreground, make sure we're painting on the mask, and we just paint out the chromatic aberration. Very easy. For method number three, we're going to work with the same image and I only use this in the past if I had really stubborn chromatic aberration that I just couldn't remove. And essentially what we're going to do is clone out the color and replace it with a different color. So to do that we open up a new layer, we change the blend mode of this layer again to color, we choose the clone stamp, we make it an appropriate size, so a little bit smaller, then we clone an area which has the color that we want to replace the chromatic aberration with. So for example, I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on a PC and left click and just clone this area up here. And I want to replace the red with that color. So I just paint over. And you see we're replacing the chromatic aberration with the more natural color of the rock. And we're not affecting the sky around it. Now be a little bit careful with this because you don't want to change the colors too much and you want it to be as precise as possible. And it can be a little bit time consuming. 
but it's worth it if you're working with a lens that tends to throw up a lot of chromatic aberration. This image was shot using a Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter, which is a reasonably priced lens, but it tended to throw up a lot of chromatic aberration. So sometimes in some of my images, I would have to clone it out. For method number four, we're going to work with the image that we had earlier on, our first example, and we're going to zoom right in and look at that chromatic aberration again. And this time, we're going to go to filter lens correction. Now, I don't have much success in removing chromatic aberration using this filter. I don't know why, I just don't seem to like it very much. It doesn't feel very intuitive. But anyway, we can zoom in to our affected areas like that. We can go to custom on the left. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And you can see we have red on the left and cyan on the right. So if I just zoom down, this is the top option, fix red cyan fringe. And if I move it left, it exaggerates the red and blue chromatic aberration. If I move it to the right, however, let's say to around 20, it completely removes the chromatic aberration. So we're left with a much cleaner image. But like I say, I don't always have much luck with this filter, so I haven't used it for a long time. But you can be effective if you're patient and you take your time. And the final method probably isn't the best one. I think it's a little bit too messy and not very precise. Basically, we're just going to isolate the colors of the chromatic aberration and just desaturate them. So if we zoom right in, you can see that the color of the chromatic aberration is very different to the color of the building on the right and the color of the sky. So that means if we open up a hue saturation layer and click our little hand here and click on our chromatic aberration, you can see we've now selected that color range of the chromatic aberration. And then we can just reduce the opacity. And it seems to work quite well. We can fiddle with these until we've included most of the chromatic aberration. And it seems to work quite well here, but it doesn't always work if any other colors in the image are similar to that of the chromatic aberration. They'll be desaturated as well. But there is a slight improvement, so you can use it, I guess, if you're really desperate. And that's it for today's tutorial. So we've looked at five methods to remove chromatic aberration in Photoshop. Again, if you think other photographers might enjoy this tutorial, then feel free to share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, or subscribe to my channel just below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.